Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Principia. In this video I plan to try to send the N1 Soviet lunar mission over to the moon, land on the moon and return safely with Principia messing our orbit up because it includes n-body physics and all of the gravitating bodies are constantly tugging on us, unlike with regular Kerbal Space Program where the orbit is basically fixed unless you apply some thrust. So yeah, we're going to have some interesting issues uh, thanks to the fact that I practiced in a previous live stream. This is not being live streamed. This is just me doing it, so I'm not going to have the help of a live stream audience. But I did get help from the YouTube comments based on the edited video of the live stream where I practiced docking, rendezvous, and transfer. So I now know that Principia deals with the burn time, for instance, and so we should start at T0 for the burn and stuff like that. But there's probably still other things that I have not quite figured out. We are going to get into a low orbit, so hopefully we're not going to have the weird perturbations that we had in the previous video with Principia. But yes, hopefully uh, doing this properly will uh, put Sergei Korolev's ghost to rest after I launch the mission on a Falcon Heavy. <laughs> so this is, uh, I am doing this on the anniversary of his passing, which is uh, two days after his birthday. Uh, so I commemorated his birthday in an odd way, but uh, we will try to fulfill what Sergei Korolev left unfulfilled and we will see how it goes. Well, at least I can say that I will probably get farther than they actually did. So there is that going for us. I have not touched the craft file. This is just the craft file that comes with a realism overhaul for Raider Nix and one rocket with the L3 stack and the um, mission to land on the moon. So I have not modified it in any way. It is going as it's going. We are at Baikonur. We're going to do everything. I mean, uh, my launch trajectory and uh, transfer will be however I see fit. Uh, so that might not be how they exactly intended to do it, but I'll do the rest. They never got to that part anyway. So, okay, rubbing it in. But uh, we'll send Jeb and Bill again. Oh, okay, fine. We'll send uh, Val and Bob. Maybe we should uh, have two pilots, actually. Val and Jeb. Okay. So, yes, without further ado, let's get going. Oh, I forgot to set the targeting celestials thing in the settings. Uh, I guess we'll work without that. Okie dokie. It is daylight. Uh, so let me just check that we can't target. Ooh, there's a lot of lines. Um... That's series. No, no, I don't want to focus on series. Stop. Some lag too. I think I've got too many lines, don't I? What even am I looking at? Everything is earth fixed. Yeah, there's too much lag. Um. Okay, maybe that'll help. There we see the moon. Set a star. Okay, we can set a target. That's about the minimum. I had already time warped. So, yes, and I made sure that we'd be launching in daylight for this glorious occasion. SAS on. And throttle is up. Our 30 engines seem to be in the right place, of course. And ignition. Okay, and go. Brief pause in the sound. Oh, uh, those grid fins are not deployed. Deploy grid fins. Substantial thrust weight ratio at the start. We are past the speed of sound. Must remember to hot stage. That's. One thing I haven't done in a long time, actually. Must remember the hot stage. Well, we can see the aerodynamics playing merry havoc with the entire length of this rocket. One of the many, many severe downsides to this particular design. Ah, yes, this snap ball. <laughs> Okay, preparing for hot staging. Okay, ignition of the NK-15Vs. And 
and separation. The lag makes it look a lot longer than it was. It was just two seconds. Throttle up. Looks like the launch escape system is after we start the next stage. Okay, getting ready for yet another hot staging here. Ignition. And separation. Okay, looking good. Of course, this isn't the hard part. <laughs> this is so not the hard part right now. Well, while we're at very low thrust weight ratio, I think we can get rid of the launch escape system. We are in space and everything. It's not like the hole that leaves there is going to cause a big problem right now. It's not going to give us any extra delta V. This stage is going to be done once we finish this burn. So, it's not like we can get to start off our transfer. Yep, no more ignitions. The fairings stay on until orbit, I think. They're just too big. Now, we obviously have some inclination to deal with, and I don't know if the off-plane transfer timing is good right now, actually. We'll see. But, there could be all sorts of other things that we can do, but we certainly can't, like, have the moon do something fancy with this mission because we do have limited supplies. We can't wait around like with a cargo mission. Seems like we have tons of extra actually on this stage. It's a shame, really. Maybe I should just carry the launch escape system with us just to weigh it down a bit to make it look a little bit better. <laughs> well, at least with Principia, those fairings will probably get the orbit soon enough. I don't know if there's orbital decay, but the orbital perturbations will probably be bad enough. Okay. And shut down. 220 by 203 right now. Bearing separation. Okay, very good. And block G, uh, block V, well, whatever, block G, yes, block G. And this is block V. So we're separating off block V. We had 600 left. That's not too bad. Okay. Yep, all looking very good so far. Now, the moon. <laughs> now the moon. Now how are we gonna get there? If we use the ascending or descending nodes to do an off-plane transfer, it will get there too late. Because if you take a look at where the ascending node is, that'll be the first one. And we boost up. It'll be over here somewhere. That's a quarter of the moon's orbit, which is seven days-ish. Maybe we can do it close to that, at least. Somewhere over here is probably the right place. Um, we want to hit it over here somewhere, but we'll probably still have some inclination, so it's not going to be great. Let's see how it works out. Uh, we did find out with the Falcon Heavy mission that Block D has substantial reserves, if you will. There's, there's opportunity here. Okay, I'll take Earth-centered for now. And flight plan. Create flight plan. Okay, add maneuver. Let's say no active engines, falling back to RCS. Active engines. Well, um, throttle is down. I'll activate this. It's only got one ignition, so I want to be careful here, but... I think that's okay. Now we've got active engines. Let me delete this maneuver, add maneuver. Okay, it sees that now. Okay, because if it's gonna do the burn timing, we want to make sure that's uh, that's all right. See, less of a problem right there. 
that the moon hasn't gotten there yet. We can actually guess that the moon is over here. But that's nine days. We can't wait that long. We will run out. Well, I mean, it's... Yeah, I don't want to. I think we should just do a correction. But what kind of correction is this going to take? I don't know. Okay, let's back this up here. Now, it seems to be perturbing our orbit here. It's interesting. Okay, uh, let's go to moon fixed. I guess MEO was a suggestion. Let's see, moon earth orbit. Well, okay, moon periapsis we can see there. That's obviously going to be too high, but it's a start. About six days is a long time, but it's not, not the worst. Okay, I've plotted it all out with mid-course adjustment, and it looks like if we can get there in 5 days, 19 hours, we can do a mid-course adjustment of 264 meters per second. I don't know if this is the optimal situation, uh, but I think I'll take it. So, yeah, as a first attempt here of doing this particular mission, that means that we're going to use 264 meters per second out of lock D to correct our orbit to get that periapsis. And given what we saw with the Falcon Heavy mission, I think we've got that. So, yeah. That mission allowed me to see the margins we have in block D. And we can potentially do this. Oh, we need to tell it to actually give me these nodes. So, show on nav ball. Okay. So that's our first node, a straight up prograde vector thing. And it'll go a little bit past the moon's orbit and come back around in order to wait for the moon. It's possible that a straight trajectory there would be better. But I've plotted this, it's fine. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not going to outstrip our resources is the main point. So you can see our orbit changing. So again, I don't know about orbital decay, but both our apoapsis and periapsis are going down. So that's fine as long as we don't hit the atmosphere. It's just more Oberth, right? Oh, uh, we're on moon Earth orbit. Do I want to have the nav ball on that though? I guess it doesn't matter. As long as Smart ASS knows where the node is. So we want the node. We don't. We want to ignore the start burn thing. We want the node thing. Otherwise, we'll be too early. There's ample RCS on this thing. And ignition. All right. And it's not counting it down. Well. The Apple RCS will help out. We had 3,300 to begin with. Um, this means that we should have 149 left by the end. 148.3. So, in theory. Right, of course, I don't know how the real... I mean, if, if Principia has integrated properly and everything, uh, maybe there won't be any radial iffiness. And it's just exactly 148.3 that I have to shut off at. Of course, we don't have the tens digit down there. Well, we are roughly halfway through. Let's see how it looks. Sort of looks like we're doing it right. So, so far, so good, I guess. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. Oh, it's doing those patterns again. Kill rotation and shut down. I think we went too far. Well, we're doing a node there. Um, does it look like we're hitting the node spot? Maybe a little bit more. Using RCS here. All right, that looks pretty close to the dotted line, doesn't it? Okay, and then we're going to use that node to tilt down. So, um, shroud bottom. I guess so. 
Uh, you know, we could still use this RCS to turn to the next node. And then that's block D. It's seven ignitions. All right. So let's just hang on to that for convenience sake. Oh, that's just crashing into the moon right now. Okay, that's good. That's good. For my later convenience, it'll be nice to be equatorial. So I'll just... Bring the orbit out like that. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. So... That's probably got the wrong engine. For the burn, but... This burn should not be too sensitive to the... Timing of it. Just gonna expend the RCS as much as possible. But, well, of course, we, we can't really see what the Delta V is doing. Okay, uh, forget that stage set. And let's just go with Ignition 265. Uh, Alright, we're not getting a Delta V reading. <laughs> Great. Okay, um, we'll shut it down at 1,900 and... 80? See if that works out for us. We can always, we can just see from the map view what's happening to our orbit too. It is time, I think, for moon fixed view. See our moon periapsis there? Ah, oh, stop getting rid of my node view. Okay, it'll pull out a bit. I think. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, that went too far. Shoot. Okay. It ended up being crashy instead of what I wanted. So, we're gonna do another correction in a bit. Let's see. Delete that. Hold on. Uh, rebase. Much as I hate taking an extra ignition, though, I don't know if we can use the RCS. There's not that much of it. We should be able to drop this fairing, right? Lock the shroud top. Um, we'll wait until we get into lunar orbit, maybe. I think it's okay to get rid of all that stuff. Yeah, that'll use the RCS too much. Okay, and prepare for chaos. Oh no. Can't see the node. Ah. Uh. Okay, yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> uh, something seems to have worked, sort of. Okay. It's rough trying to use the RCS here. We're almost done with it. Uh, this is not holding very well. I should never have used Smart ESS for this. Still haven't hit Lunar SOI. Okay, uh, now we have. All right. That's a pretty negative periapsis. Okay, let's try and make some sort of plan here that will involve us not hitting the moon. Singularity, I like that it encountered a singularity. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to do an another burn here. Got that on the nav ball. I'm gonna turn manually because otherwise it'll take too much RCS. It might take too much RCS anyway. I think I can get rid of these things. Let let them smack into the moon. Okay, then we can see the delta V here at least. We have five ignitions left on the block D. Okay, well, I don't really care about the node anyway. RCS off. Uh, kill rotation ignition. I can see the periapsis in the corner. 
I'm just using the verniers to steer at this point. Mercifully, it has those. And shut down. That'll be good enough for me. Okay, so proceeding. Hopefully, our very abscess isn't going to be perturbed too much. Uh, let's delete all flight plan things. And we will just make orbit the way we normally make orbit. We are still not crashing into it. It's good. Okay, that's probably good enough. How are we doing on the RCS? Eh, as long as I don't let Smarty SS handle it, it'll be all right. Okay, well, it seems like the fuel is settled on the engines, so... Go. Kill rotation, RCS off. Okay, well, we made more corrections than I wanted to make along the way, but it's looking like it's going to be a clean capture so far. But, I still don't know if we'll have quite enough for the landing. I forget what kind of Sage LTV we have to have left to get the right amount for the landing. Uh, that's pretty lopsided right now. Hmm. Obviously, if I applauded it with Principia, that'd be better, but I think we should leave it right there. Uh, that leaves us with uh, Periapsis on this side. That's not the worst thing. Uh, so that would mean that we're going to be landing over here somewhere. Not one of the flatter portions, but one of the seas. I don't know how long the... The orbiter is gonna last in this orbit though. I guess we'll find out eventually, but uh, let's let's wait a little bit. Let's see how much wobbliness are we dealing with here. At least it's not showing us impacting for a few orbits. Okay, I think we should decouple now. Oh shoot, I haven't sent Val or Jeb into I think we should just send Val. I had Jeb land in the previous one. Okay, um just gonna manually activate the RCS. Okay. All right. Uh, well, EVA. Well, they would have actually EVA'd across, I believe. Hey, it's my first EVA in Principia. Well, this should not be any different than normal. The early orbital transfers between vehicles for the Soviets also had EVA transfer across they couldn't go through the docking ports okay 2327 well that's better than i had for the falcon heavy mission so should be doable i don't know i don't like landing uh, let's land over here even though we'll be on our way up unlike with stock i can't just click here and create a node See, we're on our way up, and I don't want that, but... Okay, so that's 11 minutes ahead. Going to actually have that maneuver. It's counting down. Good. It's a maneuver of zero. I just want the countdown. We're really high, though. It's good enough. Uh, surface negative, execute, ignition. Oh, the vernier. Yeah, verniers, for some reason, don't have an extra ignition. It's weird. We have two ignitions remaining, so even the five ignition block D would have enough. Though we might exploit an additional ignition soon. We're gonna end up coming straight down. It's not the most efficient trajectory, but it was convenient given our lopsided orbit. Didn't want to have to correct that with another ring ignition or anything. Yeah, I just want to come down right around here. Really, I wanted to be further back. I should have started earlier. All right, stop. Yes, that is our trajectory. Okay, do we have RCS for fuel settling? Yes, we do. Okay, fuel settling. Ignition. Ignition. 
Okay, shut down. Separation. Mm -hmm. Separation. Okay, our CS on the lander module. Engine prep, gear down. So this way we get to sidestep over to this side. Okay, ignition. Oh, it's paused because of the explosions, but I need to throttle up. Hurry! Okay. And down. Okay, RCS off. Okay. Looking good. Valentina time. No, not deploy shoot. Be useless. I used the uh, Raider Nick flag this time. First time ever. Okay, so Val on the moon. Now with extra curly. What the heck did I just do? Orbits. Okay. Um, I think I accidentally switched vessels. What? No. No. View. Okay, that was first person view somehow. Uh, no. Val. Okay, there we go. Well, I'm not going to make this any harder on myself than it needs to be. Okay, well, we're going to launch into its orbit now and try to catch up to it. Yeah, because I don't want to have to deal with this. Moon Center inertia will be fine for now. Okay, yes. Let's just go. How much fuel I want to... Oh, we don't have any fuel in the landing legs anymore, so we'll just ditch them as soon as possible. So... I'll go with kill rotation. Uh, that's... Oh, well. Moon Center inertia. Uh, let's go with that for now. And go. And legs. Okay. Surface heading 90, uh, 69.5. Oh, you can't probably do points, can you? Okay. It's good enough. We want to get into a low orbit. Our apoapsis is pretty close to our target's apoapsis, so that's good. Okay, well, that'll be good enough for now. We'll catch up. And that's looking pretty good. 10 kilometers. I think we can adjust that. Oh, that, that, that was good enough. <laughs> 3.5 kilometers, Mechjeb says. Now, whether that's right or not, you know, we'll see. Let's see. I think it'll be close enough for me to do what I need to do. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. It said 3.5, 4, somewhere around there it'll be fine. Why is kill rotation? It seems to save the previous rotation instead of just going with kill rotation. Hmm. Okay, at this point I think we'll have the Soyuz do the rest. So point at the target please. Okay, and that's probably leaving us moving a little bit too quickly. Now, where is it coming in from? It's not wanting to target it. That's not right. It doesn't get to do that. Oh, there it is. Well, now we can target it. <laughs> Just a matter of getting back, really, now. Oh, and not forgetting to transfer Val would be helpful. Okay, and... And we have docked. That was some serious magnetism there. Okay, so we'll just do a true transfer this time. 
Val going back. And transfer what food, water, and oxygen we can. All right, so now getting back home. Okay, so uh, doing this. Oh, we, do we ultimately get flung out or something? Uh, uh, I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, Principia. We want Mio now. And flight plan, create. Let's just, uh, okay. No active engines. Right. Well, let's activate an engine. View. Okay, now we have an engine. Delete that. Maneuver. Okay. I would like to see the moon's orbit, actually. Uh, no, we can't do that much. And it's not showing me anything. All right. Ah, uh, it's not quite what we were looking for. Interesting, though. Interesting. Um, incidentally, how much do we have there? Six days of food. Okay, but yeah, that's not good enough for us. Okay, I don't want the moon. <laughs> okay, can we can we have emo instead of mio? Because I need the uh, Earth periapsis on this end. No, oh, well, let's just go ECI then. Okay, that's probably not doing what I wanted to do. I just want an Earth impact. It'll be fine. As long as we can get Earth impact. Clearly headed to Earth somehow. But it's not showing me my Earth periapsis. I mean, I've got Earth-centered inertial here. Why can't it give me the Earth periapsis? Maybe I should just aim for a bare exit and see how it goes, but it seems iffy. We don't have that much delta V. We really need to have it plotted properly. And that doesn't look too far away, but I can't see how far away it is. And I've got Earth-centered inertial there. That's still moon apoapsis there. All right, well, we'll have 200 to correct it, but I don't know if that's going to be good enough, but let's see. On the bright side, our node is close to our periapsis. On the downside, I don't know whether it's in the right place or not. <laughs> it's tough to say. Delete the bloody flight plan. I don't see what it's doing for me, honestly. Okay. Ignition. I want Earth-centered. That looks more Earth-centered. Why weren't you showing me that before? Okay, well, Earth is there. Does it look like we're on the right side for this burn? Seems like if the moon's going like that, it seems like we could wait a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to wait just a little bit longer. And go. Okay, oh, okay, okay, things are happening. Oh, oh, that thought. Oh, uh, let's go off time warp. Okay, we've got a predicted perigee. That's that's what I want. Four thousand, three thousand. Is it going up? I can't see. I think it's still going down. Oops. Okay, I think we'll need to get out of lunar SOI too, or maybe we can just do it now. Uh, no, probably not. Let's wait until we get out of Lunar SOI to do more retro. Okay, departing the moon. Okay, now let's make a correction to that periapsis. 
which is in three days, eight hours. We've got five days, four hours of food. Okay, that's 62 kilometers. That's going to change. <laughs> but we'll fix that closer. Yeah, I mean, we're already at 860 kilometers. Look at that. Uh, let's correct a little bit. Okay, we'll take that for now. Okay, 60 kilometers-ish. Double check that we're topped off in the pod. Seems like we are. All right, separation. Uh, just surface negative velocity. Full zero. Actually, we probably want to start off with 180, potentially. And we want the descent mode on. Never extended the antennae. We didn't really need to talk to anyone. Okay, here we go. Atmospheric interface. Taking some time, too. Okay, there we go. It's turning all over the place. It really needs to stop trying to control pitch, though. Okay, other things have exploded. We're not really slowing down much. Still trying to use pitch, even though I told it not to. Well, I think I'll have to go zero. Can we roll at all? I think it can't, but I can. We want to roll this way to mitigate the g-forces. And roll around again to try and stop going out. Okay, looks like we'll be good with no bounce up. Okay, rolling back around for the g-forces again. Just gonna have it on kill rotation now. Still using RCS all over the place. Okay, yeah, well, we ran out of RCS propellant. That was expected because we didn't stop using it. And we're rolling right around all over the place. Sure, taking a while to slow down, really. Well, at least we're not going to exit the atmosphere or anything. Okay, we are through it all. Seven meters per second. And splash down. Okay, recover vessel. And there we have it. We have successfully done the thing, my third ever attempt to use Principia. So, going well so far, more or less. And so, my admittedly minor attempt to assuage the spirit of Sergei Korolev has been successful. Jem and Val have gotten many ribbons. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.